Hello my friends, today we're going to be chatting about some of the most iconic, classic, timeless luxury pieces. The ones that everyone will tell you that you need to have in your collection if you want to be considered a serious luxury collector. Those pieces that you can wear time and time again and they will never feel or look tired. But is that really true? Today we're going to be looking at classic pieces like the Chanel classic flap. I mean, the word classic is even in the name. The Birkin, the Kelly, the Constance, pieces from Louis Vuitton, Dior, Cartier, Von Cleef, and the list goes on. And we're going to be chatting about whether or not they are truly worth your money if these pieces are truly timeless or at this point, maybe they feel or some of them feel a little boring tired, overdone, and lazy. So if you'd like to hear my thoughts on which one of these pieces are worth your money and which ones you should just pass on at this point, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. So instead of me just sitting here and rambling on and on about pieces that I could think of, I thought it would be fun if I actually asked for your feedback and if we talked about things and pieces that you would like to hear my thoughts on. So I asked you over on my Instagram to send me any classic pieces that you would like me to quickly review. And by the way, yes, I am back on Instagram. It took me a week to get my account back, but I am finally back. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, please make sure that you do so, especially if you would like to participate in future videos, because I always ask for your feedback and your submissions over there. So if you haven't, make sure that you follow me over there too. And as always, you guys send me some amazing pieces, some iconic classic luxury pieces that you wanted to hear my thoughts on. So without further ado, let's jump straight in. And the first person wanted to know about my thoughts on Tiffany and some of the most classic iconic Tiffany pieces. So when I think of Tiffany, the first piece that comes to mind is the Tiffany T-bar pieces, which I'm not exactly sure if that's what they're called, but I'm sure you know what, what I'm talking about. It's a collection that very heavily relies on the tea. There are necklaces, earrings, bracelets, and so on. But I think bracelets and the rings are some of the most popular pieces in this collection, which I would say that they are nice basic pieces. You know, if someone gifted them to me, I wouldn't be mad about it, but it's certainly not something that I would spend my money on. To me, it's kind of like the Cartier love bracelet. There isn't just really too much to it. It just feels kind of lazy. I mean, you know, they are nice pieces if you're all about Tiffany, if you want a nice basic piece that will go with anything and everything, it won't add or take anything away from an outfit. It's just a nice sort of tactile piece to have in your collection it's a good one to pick up if you are looking for a basic gift for someone that you don't know that well. It's hard to go wrong with it, but I don't think it's something to go crazy for. I would much rather pick up something from, for example, the Chanel fine jewelry collection, which if you would like to hear some more recommendations, I did just do a video on my thoughts on the Cartier Love range, which to me, they're really comparable pieces, not in how they look, but more in what they do for you. And I did mention some great alternatives, some beautiful pieces that are a lot more understated and that I do feel would add a lot more to your collection, so I will make sure to have that video linked up here for you. So based on your questions, there are three classics from Louis Vuitton that most of you thought of. Funny enough, I thought of two of them, or I think of two of them when I think of Louis Vuitton, but this third one, I mean, I'm familiar with the idea, but I would have never considered this a classic Louis Vuitton piece, but since it's here, and quite a few of you submitted this, why not talk about it? So the first one is the Louis Vuitton Petit Sac Plat, I believe it is pronounced in the monogram canvas, which is this really simple kind of flat, basic tote bag. I have to be honest with you, for me, it is a pass. I think it is just a little bit too much monogram, especially because there isn't anything interesting about the shape, the proportions, what it does for you. I mean, if you're looking for something to carry your documents in, fine. If you're looking for something to carry to the grocery store, it will do the trick, but it's not something that I would personally want to add to my collection. When it comes to Louis Vuitton, the three pieces that I personally think of are the Petite Ma, which is a bag that I picked up in 2020 in all black, which I have to be honest with you, I used probably once or twice. It is a beautiful bag, but I think it is 
extremely overpriced for what it is. If you're looking for a Petit Ma, which is a great bag, I would definitely steer you in the direction of getting it pre-loved because you can find this bag at amazing prices on the pre-loved market. It is a nice bag, but do keep in mind that it is a trunk inspired piece, which let's be honest is what Louis Vuitton does best, but because it is a hard shell bag, it really doesn't fit much. There is no gift to it. So it is a tricky bag to pack. So you do have to keep that in mind. And then the other two pieces, which I completely agree with are classics or the Louis Vuitton Speedy, which is cute. I mean, it's not my cup of tea personally, but if you are looking for kind of a really simple, you know, grab and go bag, I think it suits some people incredibly well, especially if you pick it up in a unique finish or a unique color, because it is something that they do seasonally. And Obviously, Pharrell is going to be doing them in leather for men for whenever his next collection launches. I think it's probably going to be spring, summer 2024. He's just shown his first collection for Louis Vuitton, which I was pretty underwhelmed by, to be really honest with you. I think it was just extremely predictable. It didn't feel like a unique, innovative collection. It just felt like a continuation of what Louis Vuitton has been doing, but I'm sure it's something that Louis Vuitton customers are going to go crazy for. But anyway, the reason I brought this up is because he is doing some large, colorful speedies in leather, which I think are going to be like thousands and thousands of dollars because they're made of leather, which to me just doesn't make sense because when it comes to the Speedy, I think of an easy grab and go casual bag that you really don't have to worry about too much. And when you're spending over five, six, seven thousand dollars on a bag, I mean, not a lot of people will just grab that and not think about it. And then the most iconic piece, in my opinion, from Louis Vuitton is the Louis Vuitton Kipo or also known as their duffel bag, which I think is a great piece. And I have to be honest with you, I would personally not buy this in the Louis Vuitton monogram. If I got this bag, I would get it in leather, which believe it or not, Louis Vuitton used to do this in their incredibly hard wearing epi leather, which you can still find on the pre-loved market. I don't think it's currently in production, but you can get it pre-loved, which I actually looked into doing. But if you buy a vintage Kipo, do keep in mind that it is not going to feature a shoulder strap, which put me off of getting one vintage, but they do still do them in some seasonal finishes in different leathers. I think it is a great staple classic duffel bag that you cannot go wrong with, but I would personally not opt for any one of their monograms or their demi prints. They are they just feel a little bit overdone in my opinion. And speaking of traveling, a couple of you submitted this brand, which I wasn't planning on talking about, but I mean, it makes sense because spending over $1,000 on a suitcase does put them in this luxury range because that's how much their suitcases cost, which is Remova. Now, long story short, I do like Remova. I use my Remova carry-on almost every single time that I travel. And I have to say that the experience of using a Remova suitcase is extremely luxurious. Their suitcases are really nice quality. They are really easy to pack. They have a ton of really cool features, all of which I discussed. I think I did a video talking about how to travel with your luxury pieces in which I also shared my review on my Remova carry-on. So if you'd like to hear more about this piece and whether or not it's worth the money, if you'd like to see how I personally use mine, I will make sure to have that video linked up here for you. But to answer your question, yes, I do think that if you travel a lot, investing in a Remova carry-on is a great way to go. Okay, some of you guys sent me quite a few pieces in just one question, which I really appreciate. So we can do some quick fire ones. The first one is Laura Piano Summer Walks, which I talked about recently. I do think that they look great on some people, but not on everyone. These shoes are incredibly popular. And what I always say is that these are things that will dress an outfit down. These will not dress you up. So what I'm trying to say here is that if you, let's say, wear these shoes with a pair of jeans and a basic white t-shirt, they will look out of place. But if you have an aesthetic that is a little bit more formal, if you appreciate a more tailored look, these are great pieces to have in your collection to make your outfits feel just a little bit more laid back but these are sort of an acquired taste. They are a specific look that won't go with anything and everything. 
Contrary to popular belief, these look casual, but they can look just a little bit too casual and out of place if you don't style them with the right pieces. The next piece that we are discussing here is the Raw Margot bag, which I love the idea of. I talked about this bag before. I genuinely don't think that the quality is where it should be for the price, so I would definitely consider it picking up this bag just because of the way it looks, but I would not get it directly from the row. I would try to get it from another retailer that puts this bag on sale, which some places do, or I would try to get this bag pre-loved because I love the really simple stripped down but classic aesthetic, but I just think it is a little bit overpriced for what it is. Chanel wallet on chains, which is something that I talked about in my last video. I think they were great a few years ago. I think when Chanel first started doing them, it was an ingenious idea. Having something that works as a wallet, but also works beautifully as a bag, something that features a long shoulder strap and is able to carry all your essentials. I think it was a great idea, but at this point, I think we have outgrown the simplicity of a Chanel wallet on chain. If you appreciate the look, I think there are so many other brands at this point who do it so much better. I think the wallet on chain is something that at this point should just be left in the past. Now, if it's something that you own and use on a regular basis, I'm not saying to throw it out, but I'm not sure if it's something that I would want to invest my money in. If you're looking for a comparable bag from Chanel, maybe invest in one of their mini vanities, which I feel have a more unique shape to them. Getting a wallet on chain from Hermes, let's say, could be a great idea. So I think you have a lot of options at this point, and I wouldn't necessarily go to Chanel for that particular look because it is something that can feel just a little bit too outdated. What is the first piece of jewelry that you think of when you hear luxury fine jewelry? I think the first thing that comes to mind for most people, not only me, but also you based on your questions is the Cartier Love bracelet. Now it's no secret that it isn't my most favorite piece. I did just do a video sharing my very honest thoughts on the Cartier Love bracelet and why I do think that at this point it is just way too overdone. So I am going to leave that video linked up here for you instead of me going on and on and on about it again. But long story short, I do not think it is worth the money. And then the other piece a lot of you asked about is the Von Cleave All Ombre Collection, which again is something that I reviewed before. This is what I think. I think the Von Cleave All Ombre bracelet and necklace and earrings and rings are beautiful pieces, but similar to, actually kind of similar to the Lower Piano Summer Walks. There is a certain aesthetic to the Von Cleef All Ombra line. They feel really sophisticated, really old school, kind of stuffy, and they can look out of place if they're not styled with the right outfit. They can look disjointed and they won't look the most elevated. So I don't think that it is a collection that is for everyone. If you have a more casual, more laid back look, there's nothing wrong with that, but I don't think that this is the best collection for you to invest in. There are some amazing collections and some amazing ranges from One Cleave that I think would look much better with the pieces that you already own. So I think they're great pieces. They can be a beautiful addition to a collection if it is a look that suits you, if you have that sort of ladies who lunch aesthetic. An extremely underrated favorite of mine is the Lady Dior, which again, to me, it is just not one of those universally flattering pieces. It kind of goes hand in hand with the Juan Cleef Alhambra, although I do think that the Lady Dior is a little bit more flexible, but I do think that if you're looking for a beautifully made classic timeless bag, something that feels a little bit more traditional. It is a beautiful piece to have in your collection. Now, if you are trying to dress it down, which you can certainly do with this bag, I would suggest picking it up in a smaller size, preferably with the chain strap, because Lady Dior's do come with a strap. Some of them come with a leather strap. Some of them come with a chain strap. If you're looking for something that can feel a little bit more casual and you can make it work as part of a more casual outfit, which you 1000% can, maybe pick it up in a smaller size with a chain strap or get one of those straps that are a little bit thicker just to help make this bag feel a little bit more contemporary. But I do think that it is a beautiful bag. And the Lady Dior doesn't really feel like 
other Dior bags do. I don't think that Dior bags are the most exquisitely made. Other than the Lady Dior bag, I'm not exactly sure why that is, but I do think that Lady Dior, perhaps because I'm a little biased because I love the way they look, they just feel a lot more well thought out, well designed, and also well produced and well made. They do feel a lot more luxurious than other Dior bags do. Obviously, again, it is an acquired taste. It's not going to be for everyone, but I do personally love the way they look and what these pieces are able to do for you and for your collection. And last but not least, let's move on to some of the most iconic, classic, timeless luxury pieces, which of course, a lot of you guys mentioned. And why don't we start with the Chanel Classic Flap, which you already know my thoughts on. To me, it is a bag that at this point feels just really kind of tired and lazy, especially for the price and what you get for the price, because it is widely known that Chanel's quality is purely not the best at this point. Is it the worst bag that I have ever seen? No, it's not, but it's a bag that no longer gives me butterflies. There was a point in time Anytime I saw Chanel bag walking down the street, my heart would skip a beat because it was such a beautiful, iconic piece. But I do think that at this point, it kind of feels overdone. Does it still look great on some people? 1000%. If it's always been a dream of yours to have a classic Chanel bag in your collection, definitely pick it up. You can pick it up in some unique finishes so you can get it in tweed. And let's be honest, no one does tweed quite like Chanel does. You can get it in a small size that feels a little bit more contemporary. You can get it in a seasonal color or a seasonal leather. So there are definitely ways to spice it up and make it feel a little bit more relevant. But would I spend my life savings on a Chanel classic flap at this point? I would most certainly not. A much better alternative from Chanel, in my opinion, is the Chanel 2.55, which weirdly feels a lot more contemporary and a lot more relevant, which it shouldn't because it has been around a lot longer than the classic flap has, but I just prefer the details. I prefer the quilting. I like the simple understated hardware and my favorite detail on the 2.55 is the thick, robust chain. So if you're looking for a classic Chanel bag, but you don't want to go down the route of, the, well, the same route that everyone does and getting a Chanel classic bag, a 2.55 is a lot more classic, yet, weirdly, it feels a lot more fresh and contemporary. So that's what I would do. Or if you still prefer a Chanel classic flap, get it in a smaller size, not in a mini, but maybe a small size and make sure that you pick it up in a really unique texture. So get it in tweed, get it in cashmere, get it in shearling, or perhaps get one on the pre-loved market in a color or a leather that is not currently being offered. So when I posted my last video talking about the Cartier Love Bracelet and saying that it is kind of overdone at this point, a couple of you pointed out that if my opinion is that the Cartier Love Bracelet is overdone, I should say the same about the Kelly and the Birkin bag, which you see over and over and over again on social media. Every single luxury lover either has a an Hermes bag on their wish list, they have one in their collection, or they have some sort of a dupe of it, which I actually have to agree with. I do think that Birkins and Kellys are not what they used to be. Not a big difference in my opinion, and why I still advocate for these bags is because of the quality. I do still think that there are no bags out there that are as beautifully crafted as Birkins and Kelly's. And don't get me wrong, all their mess bags are exquisitely done, but there is still something special about a Birkin or a Kelly's put together. So to me, that is a big difference when it comes to something like a love bracelet, which is machine made. There's really nothing special about it. That's why to me, it feels a lot more overdone, a lot quicker than an RMS Birkin would, because I am personally not one of those people who buys these bags because of this sort of status symbol because I want to show off something. I buy them because of my passion for the heritage and the outstanding craftsmanship. And I do think that it all depends on the way you style these pieces. If you carry a Birkin with an outfit that it simply doesn't go with, even though it is a multifaceted bag that you can do it a lot with, I think you can tell when someone carries a Birkin purely because they want to show off or if they're carrying it because they have 
a love for the quality, the brand, the leathers, the colors. And there's nothing wrong with either one if you're buying Birkins because you want to show people, hey, I can spend 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars on a bag. More power to you. You go for it. It's your own money. You do whatever you want. And if you're buying it because you have a true passion and appreciation for the heritage of the brand, great for you too. And I am by no means saying that one is better than the other. I'm not saying that you are superior. If you know the ins and outs of Hermes's history, it doesn't matter what you do with what you buy. But I am saying that I think there is a big difference. You can tell when someone is carrying a Birkin because of the certain message that the bag conveys and when they're carrying it because they have an appreciation and an understanding for the brand. And I do think that it is important regardless to be familiar with the heritage of the brand because it gives you more of an insight into what you are actually paying for because it is not just a hollow price tag. I mean, I'm sure a lot of it goes towards marketing, but also there are very few bags out there that are as exquisitely made as our mess bags. And I will do a video on some beautifully made bags in case you're looking for something a little bit more understated, something easier to come by, and something that feels a little bit more fresh. But let's not forget that there are very, very, very few brands, if any, that do bags as exquisitely as our mess does. I mean, the craftsmanship, the leathers, the colors are just truly divine so to me that is a big difference and that's why i have a hard time saying that Hermes birkins and kelly's are overrated are they overdone perhaps they are a little overexposed at this point but i think because of the quality they can get away with it at least in my opinion but even i have been leaning towards some of my more understated bags. I mean, I can't remember the last time I actually carried out a Birkin or a Kelly, even though they are bags that I appreciate. I have been buying RMS for over a decade at this point, And now that we have pretty much anything and everything with a twist closure, I mean, shoes, belts, ready to wear, SLGs, and a ton of different bags, I am definitely eager to get my hands on something that feels just a little bit more exciting and interesting but i still think that birkins and kelly's are incredible staples to have as long as it is an aesthetic that fits into your life and these were my really honest thoughts on some of the most classic iconic luxury pieces i hope i don't get cancelled for not saying that all of these are a great investment piece but i cannot lie to you guys it is a lot of money to spend on fashion and I have to be honest with you and I cannot wait to hear your thoughts. Please do not hold back and share your feedback in the comments section. Which one of these pieces do you own? Are you looking for any of these pieces? Do you have any one of these on your wish list? What has been your personal experience? I cannot wait to hear what you have to say and while you're down there, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I really appreciate you being here and watching and I hope to see you back here with a new video really, really soon.